Um, first off, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jill Duggan, and I'm director of the Prince of Wales's Corporate Leaders Group and the EU Green Growth Platform. And despite their titles, despite the title of the Prince of Wales's Corporate Leaders Group, it is a European group, uh, particularly post-Brexit. It is a very uh, determinately European group of, uh, we have usually between 20 and 30 companies from a variety of sectors who have decided that actually sensible policies on climate change are good for them. And so they work with policymakers, with politicians, with each other to support progressive action on climate change. But because they're a cross-sectoral group, they tend to talk about the, the broad framework rather than the specific policies. So we're very lucky. I think we have one of our companies here today, which is Philips Lighting. Um, but as I said, we're between 20 and 30 companies from across Europe, um, very much focused on taking action on climate change. They're mostly multinational companies. Um, and this group formed the basis of the business element of the European Green Growth Platform. Um, the Corporate Leaders Group has been going for 12 years. The European Green Growth Platform has been going for about five years. And it was set up initially to support the Green Growth Group in Europe, which is the group of the environment ministers who have a more ambitious take on climate change, who about five years ago decided it might be sensible if they got together the day before important votes to coordinate their views and action. You kind of think it's self-evident, but it took them quite a long time to get to that point. And the business element of that, which is formed of the uh, corporate leaders group members plus um, there's another 15 or so businesses across Europe that support um, the, the climate change agenda by intervening with supportive messages or with um, actions that they've taken at specific moments that have the most impact. So, for example, this year we had our Green Growth Platform Summit the day before the Environment Council meeting at the end of February. Um, we introduced to that summit speakers from China talking about their emissions trading systems and the other policies they have. We had a speaker from India talking about the blueprint that they have to achieve 57% of their energy from renewable sources by 2027, in contrast to the European target of getting 20% of our energy from renewable sources by 2030. And we had a speaker from the United States um, who was talking about, despite what's happened perhaps at a national level and the doubts that there are being expressed about um, action on climate change, although still to date no withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, there's a lot of action at the state level in the United States that is still moving the debate forward. So the businesses will then engage with what they have been able to do. And I think there is a, a consistent message that our businesses in the Corporate Leaders Group and the Green Growth Platform have put forward, which is that quite often legislation may kick them off, get them started, sometimes somewhat reluctantly, that there is a new piece of legislation or a new mechanism that businesses need to deal with. But quite often that leads to a certain amount of innovation, creative thinking and momentum at the business level and businesses now, I think, on a variety of issues are overtaking policymakers in the way that they are thinking about how to address these challenges of the 21st century. And so the engagement that they can have with the Corporate Leaders Group and the Green Growth Platform is to make sure that policymakers are aware of what's possible, what will drive investment, and what can be achieved. So it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship, not always started with the most positive uh, of intentions, but I think that the momentum is very important. So one of the things that we have done recently is we've produced a report, and I think we have an executive summary, um, in a, well, in a variety of translations of the executive summary, but the report, which is a business conversation, 21st century energy, that um, has got quotes and, and the experience of corporate leaders group members and others of our broader network who are not necessarily energy generators. So we do have one energy generator who, who's um, been quoted in, in this, and they've talked about their experience with renewables. But it's also about the other businesses and what their experience in renewables is. Some of them have committed 
to buying 100% of their energy from renewable sources. And for those companies, it's quite clear that they want to invest in places, in regions, in countries, in towns, where they know that they're going to be able to fulfill that commitment. And that's one of the things that they will look to. So Google have committed to buying 100% of their energy from renewable sources. They are a massive user. Google each year uses the same amount of energy as the city of San Francisco does. So they're a huge energy user. They want to expand, they want to move, and they want to be able to continue to buy um, energy from renewable sources without anybody calling them out on it. Other companies quoted in this report will also be looking to buy renewable energy, and for them that may be the best way of engaging in the debate, and many of you will know of the campaign, the RE100 campaign, where companies commit to buying 100% of their energy from renewable sources. Other companies that we talk to want to have a slightly different take. Some of them want to produce some of their own energy, and it's not always a commercial consideration. Sometimes it's because they want to be sure of their indep energy independence and security. They w don't want to become a political football. They want to be able to stand back and have control over a certain element of their uh, resources and cost base. Um, and those also will be looking to invest in countries that have the right conditions that enable them to continue with that strategy. Some of them, and I think one of the... Um, one of the companies quoted in our report was IKEA, who not only want to engage from their point of security, but also to present an example to their, their customers for whom they may wish to be selling some of the elements to allow them to have their own security of supply through distributed generation. So there's a whole variety of reasons. And this is just one example and the kind of things that we bring into the policy debate. And later this year, we'll be doing something similar where we talk to companies about their experience in resource productivity in the circular economy and the sort of policies that will help them pursue those strategies in an effective way. So that, that's what we do and what we'd hoped to do today, and I'm really pleased that all of you were here, but one of the challenges that we'd set ourselves that we perhaps haven't succeeded on is how to get more businesses in the room. And I noticed from the, the attendance list that we have got some businesses and I'm really pleased that you've turned up. But we've also got a lot of embassies, we've got a lot of government um, and associations in the room. So I think one of the, the things that I would ask you to address and think about today is how do we get these discussions going with some of those who haven't yet engaged in them? Um, and it's always a challenge for all of us to do that.